Three randomized phase two studies were conducted to evaluate the myelopreservation benefits of trilocyclib in small cell lung cancer. The first was the O2 study that I had the privilege of participating in. This was the then standard of care for first line extensive stage small cell carboplatin and etoposide, either with the addition of placebo or with the addition of the CDK4-6 inhibitor trilocyclib. The standard of care evolved from carboplatin and etoposide to carboplatin, etoposide, and atezolizumab, and therefore the O5 study was conducted. This was again a randomized phase study of standard of care plus or minus, so carboplatin, etoposide uh, plus placebo, or carboplatin, etoposide plus trilocyclid. And finally, the O3 study looked at second-line extensive stage small cell, again with the standard of care uh, uh, topotecan, uh, either with placebo or with trilocyclin. Your question is an interesting one because efficacy and safety were the same thing in this study. Remember, this was not a study of an anti-myoplastic agent, but rather a supportive care agent designed to decrease the side effects of chemotherapy. And so safety and efficacy were the same here. And what we're looking for is a decrease in the side effects of chemotherapy in the form of decreased myelosuppression. Uh, and that, in fact, is what is found. Whether you looked at pooled measures or individual measures, there was, in fact, decreased myelosuppression, both in the individual studies and the combined analyses. So we're talking about things like a decrease in severe neutropenia, a decrease in febrile neutropenia, a decrease in the supportive care required, which is to say GCC, GCSF administration, as well in the red cell lines, a decrease in grade 3, 4 anemia, red blood cell transfusions, uh, and ESA administration. Uh, and in the pooled analysis, uh, a decrease in grade 3 for uh, thrombocytopenia uh, and a uh, numerical decrease in platelet transfusion. Whenever I analyze a randomized phase 2 study, I always approach it with a degree of skepticism or critical thinking because randomized phase two is not the same thing as randomized phase three. And so what I do is I look at the totality of the data, not just the primary endpoint, and I look to see if there's a consistent story. In the case of trilocyclid, uh, that story is very clean from mechanism of action to the endpoints uh, we've discussed. The other thing I look for in a randomized phase two study is how it fits into the literature. And again, I'm looking to see, does this all make sense to a story that I'm going to believe to potentially change my care or in other cases, consider a phase three. And in this case, we look to each of these three studies to compare to each other and we see a remarkably consistent story. Combining the data allows us to have a greater degree of statistical power and precision to see what's true as well as to bring out subtle effects. In addition, it gives us greater power to evaluate the question of whether trilocyclib harmed progression-free survival or overall survival. And there, the curves are extremely reassuring. Uh, there is no harm whatsoever to survival. The curves are completely superimposable. And with PFS, uh, certainly there's no harm. If anything, there's a weak trend favoring trilocyclib. And so this reassures us that the results from one of the studies carried over into the others, that it's true and gives us more statistical precision and power. When I'm educating my fellows, I like to distinguish between a laboratory toxicity and a human toxicity. And what I mean by this is a laboratory toxicity is something you need a test to evaluate. A white blood cell count, a red blood cell count, a platelet count, um, a CAT scan result, any test result, but something the patient may not feel. A human toxicity is something that your patient feels. They feel, they don't feel anemia, they feel shortness of breath, or they feel fatigue. So if our goal with trilocyclib is myelopreservation, the question is, did these laboratory numbers that I talked to you about, like the decreased rate of neutropenia, of anemia and such, did these translate into human gains in quality of life? And if you look at the quality of life measures, whether global uh, or the individual subscales across the board, they're either statistically significant or strongly trended all in the right direction towards quality of life. And if you look at the specific subscales, 
that you would expect to be better based on the mechanism of action here, like fact anemia or fatigue, the things that by common sense you would expect to preserve with those lab numbers, it carries through. And so the story is very clean from mechanism of action to individual study phase two data for myelopreservation to pool data of myelopreservation to the quality of life measures that we're aiming for as a consequence. With regards to small cell lung cancer of the extensive stage, I believe that the results presented, particularly with the good quality of life measures and with the combined analysis and the complete consistency of the data, in my opinion, should be good enough for FDA approval and adoption. We'll see if the agency agrees. With regards to future studies, a metastatic colorectal cancer trial is expected to start in the fourth quarter of this year. Additionally, Based on the positive phase two findings from the triple negative breast cancer study, um, trilocyclib has been selected for the large and famous iSpy trial. Other trials with combinations and others are being discussed in the lung cancer context.